What do you do if you want to have strong legs? What's the best exercise for legs, Rowie? Do I do squats? Do I do lunges? Do I do leg presses? Do I do leg extensions? Do I do leg curls? And then there's all sorts of different squats. There's sumo squats and goblet squats and single leg squats and all sorts of ways to work the muscles in your legs. But here's a great question. Do your legs know, do the muscles in your legs know which exercise you're doing? If you have to activate the muscles in your legs, so your calves, your hamstrings, tibialis anterior, quadriceps, all the stabilizing muscles, uh, and then if you pick something up off the ground, it's not just your legs, is it? Because you're going to be using your bum and you're going to be using your abdominals and your back, lower and upper. You're going to be using your arms to pick the thing up off the floor. So why do we call it a leg exercise? So lunges and squats, uh, where you have to pick something up to do the exercise can't just be called a leg exercise because we're using all the different muscle groups of the upper body. And is it possible that the little muscles get tired before the big ones? I'm going to say that again. Is it possible that the little muscles, the stabilizers, those tiny muscles that allow you to lift something up off the ground, is it possible that they get tired before the big muscles like your glutes, your hamstrings, your quads, your calves. They're big, powerful muscles. The muscles in your legs are the ones that allow us to drive forward. They're, they are the ones that allow us to jump. They are the ones that allow us to lift heavy things. They're the biggest me metabolic engine in our body, the muscles in our legs. Now, all of our muscles are the metabolic engine of our body. They are the driving force. Now, the reason this is such an interesting question is there's so much argument about the best way to train legs and the variations for training legs. But I'm gonna ask the question again. If you use all the muscles in your legs, do they know whether you are lifting a barbell, a dumbbell, a kettlebell, a box of rocks, a one rock, a log, a wheelbarrow full of something, if you use every single muscle in your body better than just the muscles in your legs, which means if you pick something up off the ground, see I have to use my hands to do this, and I have to use my forearms and my upper arms and my lower arms and my shoulders and my back and my abdominals otherwise I'd fall over and all the big muscles in my legs. I wish it wasn't so complicated. I wish the world stopped making exercise so complicated. Why don't we just pick exercises that use as many muscles as possible at the same time? And at the same time is the important one because that fires up the endocrine system. That fires up the hormones that allow us to get stronger, that allow us to be powerful. The muscles and the bones and the cardiovascular system and the heart and lungs and the respiratory system, they all have to get fired up so that we can fight and flight at 100% effort. So if I, lift as, if I lift as heavy as I can, I do as many as I can and I use as many muscles as I can at the same time, I fire up my central nervous system, I fire up all the hormones in my body that are gonna allow me to fight and flight, and if I keep going till I can't do any more, my body says she's trying to, she's going to die. She's under threat. She's, somebody's trying to kill her. We better get stronger for next time. So that's where the hormonal system comes in. And I'll just use it as a simple example. If I put my body under stress, I now fill my brain up with brain-derived neurotropic factor, which is fertilizer for my brain. And the reason we've got that hormone is that if I'm under threat again, what if the threat's bigger? What if the weight's heavier? What if the wild animal that's chasing me is faster or, or nastier? Then I've got to be better. So then everything in my body gets better. So my brain gets tougher and stronger. I get mentally tougher when I overcome a heavy load. I get physically stronger. I get res respiratory and cardiovascularly fitter when I overload. But my muscles and bones are blind and they can't count. So this whole business about reps and sets and different kinds of exercises, even variations of exercise. Here's the biggest question. What's the safest position to put my body in so that I can lift the heaviest weight? And one of the challenges with all the different complicated uh, leg exercises and different squatting and lunging exercises is most of them are limited by the amount of weight that you can lift with your hand. So if I've got a, and then I'm trying to, a lot of exercises are trying to combine upper body exercises with lower body exercises, which means the limitation of the exercise is how much I can lift with my upper body, not how much I can lift with my legs. And my legs are really powerful. So why don't we put ourselves in the safest, safest position possible, which is obviously shoulders back and together because that's good posture, abdominals in tight because that's good posture and it means that I'm not going to fall forward, and then I'm going to bend all of my joints at the same time because that gives me the best lever leverage to be able to lift something safely. 
And again, as I always share, most squats, lunges, leg exercises that you see in a gym and exercise facility that you see people doing, if you did that same movement pattern uh, in a workplace, apart from the fact that you look absolutely ridiculous if you went to pick something up with your legs really wide, or if you went to pick something up lunging position with your legs really wide, people would say, what are you doing? Because the human body doesn't work like that. Functional means I want to pick this up safely so the weight's going to be close to my body, I'm going to bend all my joints at the same time and I'm going to lift slowly and control as heavy as I possibly can to use every single muscle, bone, ligament, tendon and joint and I'm going to fire up my endocrine and central nervous system. I'm going to keep going until I can't do any more in the phosphate system because that's the only, only system where I work at 100% effort. I get excited about this because that's only 10 seconds. If I can lift something for longer than 10 seconds, it means the weight's too light. So I want a heavy weight, lift it for 10 seconds, keep going till I can't do any more within that 10 second time frame. And you don't stop at 10 seconds, but if you can do more with that weight, more than 10 seconds, then next time I want to lift a heavier weight. Because the only time that I work at 100% effort is in the phosphate system. The phosphate system is the fight and flight system, the stay alive system. That's what I like to call anything where I pick something up off the ground. Now, if I pick it up at the front, somebody would call it a deadlift. If I pick it up this way, oh, that, that must be a deadlift. But guess what? I call it a live lift for a start. And isn't that the most functional movement? Picking something up off the ground close to your body, using every single muscle in your body, keep going till you can't do any more. So rather than getting confused by variation of exercise, how about what's the exercise that's going to use the most number of muscles? I'm going to fire up my endocrine and central nervous system to peak performance, which means heavy. I keep going until I can't do any more, but in the phosphate system, which is only 10 seconds. And now I've got a brain that's going to be stronger. I've got a body that's going to be stronger. And interestingly, that's a technically called a leg exercise, but I have to use every other muscle in my body as well to get that weight up off the floor. So please, if you are an exercise professional, if you are a coach, if you're giving advice about exercise, rather than getting caught up in the, the opinions of other people and the variations and fashions and fads of the, the, the fitness industry, why not think for yourself, how does the human body work? How does the, the hormonal system work to fire everything up to get the best results? How does the central nervous system work to fire everything up to get the best results? And if I want a strong body and a strong brain and a strong uh, ability to handle life, then I need to overload my body to 100% effort. My muscles are blind and they can't count. So just do an exercise that does as many, uses as many muscles as possible at the same time. And the beautiful thing about that is technically only three movement patterns. We can push with our upper body, we can pull with our upper body, and we can lower our body down to the ground and pick something up. But if I'm limited by what I can lift with my hands, then I want to make sure that I've got everything close to my body so I can lift as heavy as possible. As soon as I start putting my arms above my head or out here, I'm limited by a very small amount of weight and I've got gravity going through uh, across my joint rather than through my joint. So I'm going to have, unfortunately, higher risk of injury. So to wrap all of that up, keep it simple. Lift as heavy as you can in the phosphate system. Keep going till you can't do any more. And live your life to the max because your body's getting stronger and your brain's getting stronger and it's all going to work together so that it can be fit and strong for long. And wouldn't that be bloody awesome? I want to be fit and strong for long. Woohoo!